And here I'm going to show you how just how easy it is to install a Gimme X board in a Coco 3. Um, what we've got here is a Coco 3 with the cover off. There's a Boomerang E2 board already in there. And an 87 Gimme in the socket. Um, right here, this capacitor right here has been replaced with a low profile version that sits a little lower than the top of the socket. The original one that's in there sits up too high and interferes with the board. Um, there's more information about that on my website and stuff. But that has to be replaced first. And now to remove the gimme you simply um, get a PLCC puller like this one here. You definitely want to use that rather than try to pry it out of there by any other method. Some of these sockets are old and brittle and rather tight fitting and you can actually crack the socket. So use the puller like this. There's two corners on the socket that allow you to put the little jaws through there and you want to make sure you push down on that and get it past the chip. Otherwise they'll, they'll jump out and scratch the top of the chip. Once you're down past the chip, it's just a matter of squeezing the puller and it pops right out like that. So, that's how you pull the old gimme and set that somewhere safe in some anti-static stuff because they are worth quite a bit as they haven't made them for a long time. So, then we have the gimme X here and we have a boomerang E2 in this machine so it's going to require this little um, wire to go from the E2 to the uh, uh, Gimme X. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Connects to the E2 right there. It's easier to put it in right now so you can route it under the board like that. Then as far as putting the Gimme X in, you need to take this plug here and very carefully line it up. You want to get down and look at the plug in the socket when you're putting it together and you can as you move it around you'll you'll feel when the pins go into where they can kind of start in the little grooves that hold the contacts there. Once that's in it's a matter of just pushing it down and it'll seat all the way down on the board should be very firmly in there at that point. Now we connect our upper address lanes for our RAM here. And then we just need the connection to our button board or our video output, which will be a little 10 pin connector like this that goes there. Just kind of support the Gimme X a little bit on that end when you plug it in. Make sure you're seated again there. Socket's right under that point. And that is it as far as installing it. Now the ribbon cable can be routed out over the composite um, jacks here. Composite and sound jack. Without having to do any kind of case mod. And there are little external boxes that you can put the button board in has the two buttons on it and the video cable for BGA. So now we'll put the keyboard back on there. We already have an SDC in So I'll just go ahead and point it at the screen here and we'll boot it up with the Gimme X that we just put in. And there goes our startup screen. We have a little picture viewer on here. That'll show off the uh, some of the Gimme X's extended um, features as far as um, 640 by 225 and 320, 16 color 640 by 225 and 256 color 320 by 225. I have a few pictures in here that I converted so. There's a little program I wrote, and right there's the directing ring with some pictures, and here goes some 640 by 225 pictures. Go ahead and make that a little 
easier to see on the screen. And we'll just take a look at a few of them. They're just pictures I downloaded from the internet and converted into a format that my viewer uses here. I think they're about 73k or so a piece. It's not compressed data. So and that was 16 color. This is the new 256 color mode that we put in. And these those two modes are both uh, 320 bytes per line which is double what the original gimme could lead, read in for a line of video. So here we have 256 colors on the screen at one time. Assuming the image needed that many. And it looks pretty nice. It outdoes the original gaming by quite a bit for graphics capability. And one of the buttons will let you put scan lines on, which gives it kind of a neat effect. It's uh, a little darker when you're viewing that way, but it actually, by taking out every other line of video, in some ways it makes it look like the resolution is better because on a 640 by 480 display like this those lines are basically doubled up for the cocoa resolution I think that looks pretty good and then there's kind of an oddball mode 640 by 112 and then the lines per row are set at 2 so that the vertical resolution takes up the whole screen even at 112 so it would be basically four lines instead of two lines converting the cocoa resolution over to BGA and it's an interesting mode though you get a lot of horizontal resolution still 256 colors though so pretty cool that could possibly be used in some interesting ways but that's about it for um, plugging in the gimme board so, that's the end of this video, guys.